More than 18 million Sudanese are facing acute hunger because of the civil war in Sudan. Many of them can't be reached by aid agencies, while others have sought refuge in neighboring countries. The UN estimates more than half a million Sudanese have arrived in South Sudan since the conflicts between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces began last year. Let's go live to Malcolm Webb, who's at a transit camp in the border town of Rank in South Sudan. Talk to us about the scene uh, where you are, Malcolm. What, what is the, the situation like for the people who arrive at that transit camp? Well, the people arriving here, some say they're fleeing the violence, uh, abuses against civilians, targeting uh, of populations or sexual violence, and others say they've left just because the conditions there in Sudan have become unlivable, with areas cut off uh, from food uh, and other essential supplies. Uh, but some of the humanitarian agencies working here say that people who stay in the transit camp uh, for too long are also suffering uh, malnutrition. Uh, we spoke to one woman who's been here for nearly a year uh, and is struggling to feed her children. Let's take a look at that story. <laughs> Sudan's civil war has forced about 8 million people from their homes and left more than twice that facing acute hunger. These mothers are seeking help for their children, having arrived at this transit camp in the border town of Renk in South Sudan. Nyakwat Gadloak says she was among the first to flee the fighting almost a year ago. She's been in the camp ever since and gave birth here to Nyachang. She says her husband died. The red shows Nya Chang's arm is far too thin for his age. He's severely malnourished. The living conditions here are very difficult. I'm the one that's supporting all the children. I work selling tea to earn money for their survival, but it's really difficult for me to support them. Renk depended on Sudan for food and cross-border trade before the war. Now, the traffic's one way, and many come empty-handed. Most of the people arriving here are hungry. They've come from parts of Sudan and have been cut off from food and other essential supplies because of the fighting. So here, the UN's World Food Programme is registering the new arrivals, taking fingerprints and entering everybody in a database of displaced people. The UN says it's short of funds to be able to deal with this crisis. Here, each new arrival has issued a voucher for about $14, which is meant to feed them for seven days. Most of the more than half a million people who've arrived here are returning South Sudanese. But a growing number of Sudanese people are now fleeing here too. Most don't have any connections or support here. I haven't received anything since I arrived. It's my second day of waiting. My daughter's very hungry. Amna has better luck this time. South Sudan's currency is losing value as oil revenues fall because of the war. Food prices are going up. Severely malnourished children, like Nya Chang, are treated at the transit camp by Irish charity Goal with a nutritional paste. The specialist here told us that the worst cases are people who've stayed here a long time, waiting for relocation. In this time, the children are really deteriorating. You know, the condition becoming worse. But Nyakwat, like many here, says she doesn't want to be relocated. Her home area in South Sudan suffers armed conflict, flooding and more displacement. <laughs> She says the transit camp near the border is the only place she can survive. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Renk, South Sudan. The UN says uh, that the uh, people, uh, the, the 18 million people who have been uh, facing acute hunger uh, because of this crisis, uh, 5 million of them uh, are expected to face catastrophic hunger. Uh, in the coming months. Now, the people we saw in the story uh, are uh, at least accessing some help. There are millions more in Sudan who still uh, can't be helped at all. And the UN Security Council is due to be briefed uh, on this matter in the coming hours. Uh, meanwhile, the rainy season is due to start 
in uh, just the coming weeks. Uh, that means that more roads will be cut off. This area is prone, prone to flooding. Dirt roads can become impassable. Uh, and the humanitarian agencies say they expect that means there's going to be a spike in cases of malaria and cholera as well. Malcolm, thank you very much for that. That's Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb reporting from a rank on the border between South Sudan and Sudan.